Hey guys, Stanford here from the, from the Fun Robotics Network, and today I'm with Team 971, an absolutely legendary team here at Chessy Champs, and we're going to be going through some of the, frankly, insane stuff they've got going on in this robot. So many degrees of freedom, a super sick flick mechanism, vision, custom PCBs, it's awesome. And we've got Mac, Justin, Max, and Eric here to help us out with that, so stay tuned for all that and more in another episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funrobotics.network.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video. All right, Matt, take it away. All right, so uh, we're gonna start with the drivetrain. So uh, we are using a tank drivetrain with uh, two Krakens on each gearbox to power it. Uh, we have two Colsons on the corners here, uh, two thin Colsons, and then on the middle we have these uh, custom static wheels that we made from 3D printed parts and some hubs, and then some just like static material. Um, not really special, just kind of like a standard tank drive. Uh, moving on, we have our intake here. It's an over-the-bumper intake. Um, we used these polycarbonate rollers covered in silicone rubber uh, as, as the rollers. Um, for the hubs, we custom made these uh, 3D printed hubs uh, that we can easily kind of just screw on to the side here uh, and uh, hot swap them easily whenever something breaks. Um, all right. And then, yeah, this, this comes down over one prototyping. We kind of just thought over the bumper intake would be easier for a tank drivetrain, even though, you know, most people did under the bumper this year. And yeah, that's kind of it for the intake. So moving on, we have the transfer rollers. So what these do is it moves the note from the intake through the robot to the other side. Uh, it's just a bunch of these rollers here with these belts and the same hubs as the intake. We tried to standardize all the hubs throughout the whole robot so it was easy. Uh, and what's kind of neat about this is that it has these bolt fixtures here on all the sides so we can just unscrew it and take this whole thing out whenever needed. Um, and it's uh, kind of like protected inside the robot so we used wood uh, and uh, it it never broke, and so that, that part's great. And then moving on to the back of the robot here, we have the Extend. So the Extend has, it's kind of one of the most important parts of this robot. So the transfer will bring it to about here, and then our drive team will decide whether they want to do a speaker shot or an amp shot. And what this will do is if it wants a speaker shot, this will stay down and it'll redirect the note into our shooting mechanism here. If we want to amp though, this will basically come up and a passive connect, yeah, a passive DOF will activate here. If you saw that roller kind of move. So what that does is it redirects the motion of the note to instead come out this way and it will come down through here into the amp. Uh, and then in order to have the extend actually come up, we use these pulleys that run through here and attach onto this gearbox on both sides. And then the pulley uh, attaches onto the extend with these uh, 3D printed parts here. And we kind of just move the belt up and down whenever we want to move the extend up and down. And that's pretty neat. So, yeah, so once we, once the, the nose is loaded into the catapult, um, our whole catapult is on a turret and an altitude. Um, we used a, a uh, herringbone gear here, um, just so because it allows it to locate side to side. And we've, we've seen success before with, with this gear. Um, so what it does is we'll move this into this lip. This lip just helps it load in. Um, once the note gets in, we have a little wheel, a little wheel here that, that helps get the note all the way in and fully seated. Um, and then once we get ready to, to shoot, we'll use our cameras to localize and aim the, the catapult to wherever we want. Um, and we'll just fling, fling the note out. For our climber, we're we're using a um, like a pivot design. So we have this on a ratchet right in the gearbox here. Um, so it can only go one way. I'll fully unspool one way and then re-spool down, so I'll ratchet. Um, and we have the extend, which also um, does, does the trap too. So this whole part will extend up and go against the trap wall. Um, and we have these one, 
um, single one-way bearings on these wheels that allows us to, to pull up on the, the trap without flipping, and pull, and flipping down while we're still at this starting part of the, the climb. So there's quite a bit more wood on this robot than you usually see in uh, FRC. So what, what kind of guided you towards that material choice? Um, wood turns out to be very, very stiff for how, how heavy it is. Um, so it's a really good material for stock to prototype, but also it's very good to do make like large area, but also stiff and light. Um, so that's why we have, for example, the transfers, all the whole panel is wood because it doesn't need to be very strong, but we want it to be light and it has to cover a lot of area. Um, for the catapult arm, we chose wood for that because we prototyped with it. Um, but then also it was light enough and it kept working and it hasn't really broken um, since. We could theoretically make it out of carbon fiber, but we found that wood works perfectly fine. All right, awesome stuff. Let's go ahead and head into your uh, custom PCBs and electrical. Great. Um, for this robot, this robot is very unique in that it has a lot of different custom PCBs. And one of the most readily available ones is going to be over here. And also one of the most useful ones that we use all over the robot is going to be our encoder adapter boards. These take the input from one of our mag encoders down here in a pot and then combine it into one PWM signal that goes into the Rio with our Spartan board. Um, so we also do a funny thing with our Rios, like I was just talking about, it's called our Spartan boards. We make SL connectors and make them be able to plug into the Rio, which allows it for hot swapping and able to change it out a lot easier. And it also has a lot more liability than if you solder it in or other connectors. Yeah. Another interesting thing about this robot is the Orange and its vision system. Max will talk about it later, but we have two Orange here. One of them runs the, the Orange are down here. One of them runs the IMU actually, that's right in there, it's hard to see. And then it also controls two cameras and then the other one just controls two cameras. And the way it actually works is that the IMU runs little uh, CAN buses into, uh, into each uh, Orin and then it, there's a terminator right there that you can see, and that's how it connects, and that's how they talk to each other. And the IMU is also another one of our custom PCBs that we have. It is right here, actually. And so we make these in-house, we pick and place them, and we, our lead Scott, our, our lead electrical mentor Scott, he actually designs them, and we have to go through a lot of different testing to make sure that they work. Right here is a, a, a mock-up of one of our orange here. And so we, ha we have two custom PCBs that are actually on top of the Orin. And so one is right here below, that is the NX uh, adapter board that we're able to plug in all our SL ports into and allows us to interface with SL. And then the other one here is the LED or in NX interface board, which allows us to figure out what's going on through these LED tubes here. Great. All right. And so to talk more about vision is next step. All right. Okay. Our vision system this year is really sick. Uh, so. And like Aaron said, this is our Orin processor. Basically, it's just a super beefy GPU. And so what we did, uh, we spent pretty much all of the off season last year rewriting, well, basically rewriting an algorithm, making custom algorithm to do April tag detection, all on the GPU. So this thing runs like super fast. This thing runs two, one of these Orins runs two cameras, you can see the two HDMI. Uh, it runs, it runs uh, 60 FPS at 1440p. Oh yeah, you're right. 60 FPS at 1440p per camera. Uh, and so these are really beefy processors. Uh, and what we mainly use them for is we take in all of the April tag detections we're getting from our cameras. You can see on the robot, uh, we have four of them total. So we have one here, one here, one here, and then one over there to give us a 360 degree view around the whole field. Um, so this is great for localization. And so we feed all of that April tag data that they're all picking up on each of these cameras. We feed it back to the orange and then they do all the custom processing along with the custom IMU that Aaron showed you uh, and puts it all back to the Rio. And then that uses it for the turret so we can automatically aim at the speaker from wherever we are. And we also use it to shuttle across the field. We automatically aim towards the amp. And so that's a really cool part of our, our vision. We spent a lot of time working on that. We have learned a lot of cool things. Um, besides that, we run a lot of uh, interesting controls on everything. Everything here is tuned super well. It's made to be super accurate. I don't think we've ever had controls issues on this robot. Uh, everything's been really smooth with our software uh, and everything's super cool. Basically. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground and uh, see this yeah. thing in action. All right, so we're going to start off. We're going to intake a note first. Um, as we see, it goes through the transfer and it's stored in the extend here. And first, we're going to do the, the app shot. Um, so the whole extend will lift and then I'll just feed through, straight through. Then we'll intake another note to show the, the speaker. 
This time, since it's down, the passive buff is not activated, so it goes straight into the catapult. And then now, when it's up, it'll just fling the note. All right. All right, guys, so as you can see, this is one of the most advanced robots competing out there um, in FRC right now. I can't wait to see what these guys do in the future and with this robot here at Chessie Champs. So thank you guys so much for allowing us to come see this amazing machine and good luck with the rest of your competition. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.